Hello, and welcome to another episode of Healthy Perspectives. My name is Vernon Solomon. It's common for us to forget our car keys, where we last saw our favorite pair of socks, the name of a family friend, and even a birth date or anniversary. What isn't so common is experiencing memory loss that disrupts daily life, having challenges whenever solving problems, encountering difficulty in completing familiar tasks at home, at work, or even at leisure, and having trouble understanding visual images and spatial relationships. If these experiences sound familiar to you, what you or your loved one may be facing is early onset of Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's causes problems with memory, thinking, and even behavior. Symptoms usually develop slowly and get worse over time, becoming severe enough to interfere with daily tasks. In our society, Alzheimer's is not a commonly talked about topic. In today's episode of Healthy Perspectives, our guest Trudy Ann Bradshaw Dover, registered nurse and founder of the Alzheimer's Support Group, the Memory Club of Antigua, and medical doctor, Dr. Rashida Williams, will share with us a few things we didn't know about Alzheimer's and what we can do to properly care for a loved one that is living with this condition. And Dr. Williams, I'd like to start with you. Can you actually define what Alzheimer's is? We can, loosely. Okay. Alzheimer's is defined as a disease of the mind mm -hmm. where there are not only physical changes in the brain, but um, the patient also presents with changes in cogn cognition, in behavior, memory, and um, it's really difficult to define and it's difficult to diagnose and that is one of the issues with Alzheimer's in itself. And for clarity's sake and to help our viewers along, is there a difference when we speak about dementia and Alzheimer's? Yes, there is. Dementia is the broader term. There are many different causes of dementia. Alzheimer's is one of those causes. It is a form of dementia. What are we doing now then to help persons understand what dementia and Alzheimer's is? Worldwide, there are many different uh, Alzheimer's and dementia related organizations who are involved in research, um, involved in management protocols, the development of management protocols, they're also involved in um, extending assistance, uh, reaching out to other countries who are interested in getting involved in the fight against Alzheimer's. So here's where we break it down a bit. We're in Antigua, and we talk about these large organizations who are doing research. How does that filter down to the average individual who may be either the caregiver or a family member that's dealing with Alzheimer's. Right. So that's a little difficult because it's more personal when we get down to that level. Mm -hmm. It moves away from being something clinical to actually offering support and teaching know-how, how to manage them, how to identify, how to, how to, to deal with um, an, a person suffering from Alzheimer's on a day-to-day -day level because these are two different things. And I like the fact that you take us there, day-to-day -day level. And if I may, Trudiana, bring you in here. Within your facility, Premier Senior Living, yeah. what are you seeing on a, from the day-to-day -day side of either dealing with patients that may be suffering from Alzheimer's or the family members and caregivers? Okay, first of all, um, at Premier Senior Living, 90% um, of the clients there do suffer from Alzheimer's. Um, what we find is that family members do have difficulty coping with or even coming to terms with, that they, with the fact that their mom or their dad, who initially would have had the leadership role in the family, mm -hmm. now this person has to be cared for um, simply because they're suffering from Alzheimer's. The thing with Alzheimer's, um, as Dr. Um, Williams would have mentioned, um, pretty much 
under definition, you can't just define it as one thing because it's um, different factors that come together that cause a person to develop Alzheimer's disease. And also you have to put into um, perspective that each person is an individual as well. So coping and dealing with the individual, it can put um, some challenges um, where caregivers are concerned. But you mentioned, I know this is just your facility, you said 90% yes. of your clients yes. are suffering with Alzheimer's. But how does that translate in statistics to Antigua? Do we know? Unfortunately, um, we haven't gotten to the point where we do have statistics. I'm pretty sure they are working on that, but um, as it stands now, there is no statistics as it relates to Antigua. However, um, in terms of the U.S., um, there's statistics um, that shows that um, there are quite a few, there are actually in the millions persons that are suffering from Alzheimer's within the United States. And as a result, this had led to the campaign, um, persons forming, you know, organizations and advocacy groups to bring out more awareness um, of Alzheimer's and one of the things that they're finding is that um, by the time someone is diagnosed with Alzheimer's most often or not they're already 10 years into the disease meaning they're already either at um, the moderate or advanced stage. But thank you you took me to the question that I was going to ask you Dr. Williams you said earlier that it, it may be difficult to diagnose Alzheimer's are we finding that that is then a problem here in Antigua because there's this difficulty? We don't have the statistics. The lack of diagnosis or the, dif the difficulty in diagnosing, is that affecting the difficulty in actually getting the good statistics here in Antigua? I'm quite sure that the ordinary person would think we don't really have a big problem with Alzheimer's. But in terms of caregivers and um, physicians, nurses who encounter these patients on a daily basis. Yes, we are beginning to see that there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a growing number of persons suffering from Alzheimer's. Keep in mind that Alzheimer's is a progressive disease. And even the diagnosis takes into consideration the time that the person, patient, has been exhibiting symptoms. So if we're we recognize that there's a level of difficulty, but are there, what are we looking for? What are some of the signs that a family member may be looking for in their family members to say that, hey, maybe there's a problem, maybe my family member is suffering with dementia and or leading to Alzheimer's? What, are, what, are they, what should they be looking for? Um, lapses in memory. Um, however, that you can't really just take that loosely because um, we all have, we lapses. All have lapses in memory. <laughs> so um, pretty much that's one, one um, clinical feature. Um, there are also mood and behavioral changes. Um, there would be also changes in doing, carrying out normal functions, um, normal activities of daily living. Well, at that point, the person is at an advanced stage. Mm -hmm. um, but earlier on, um, you would have, you know, you'd have the, the lapses in the memory, the memory lapses, the mood changes, um, the changes in behavior, in cognition, and then later on, um, by the time the person is at an advanced stage, you'd have where they have difficulty in carrying out daily functions. So you, you focus a great deal on memory, and, yes. and I think we, we all respect that that is a, a clinical sign. What tests what additional tests would, as a physician, what would you do? What tests would you run to help in diagnosing your patient? Now, as a form of dementia, uh, Alzheimer's, um, it, it looks like other forms of dementia. It, it's, it's very similar. And so the diagnosis is really by exclusion. There are a battery of tests that need to be done, including um, an MRI. Uh, we're looking for systemic causes as well. We're looking to rule them out as well. Um, intoxication, um, drugs, alcohol, vitamin deficiency, anything can cause dementia. Now, once we have decided that 
it's not a vitamin deficiency, it's not a vascular dementia, it's not a stroke, um, or any of the other causes, then a psychiatrist or a psychologist who is trained uh, to, to carry out these tests or a neurologist, then they can definitively make a diagnosis after ruling out other causes of dementia. Yes. Is there a treatment for Alzheimer's? Yes, there is treatment. Um, currently, um, treatments are available, um, which would be in the line of Dr. Williams, but I can tell you, um, Aricept is one of the main drugs that are, um, that's used in treatment of Alzheimer's, and Nemantine as well, which is another drug that's used. Research is being carried out on coconut oil, which is an alternative, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is as an alternative use. However, I prefer to stick within the lines and follow the guidelines um, which the physicians Use and which we know, are which we know working. are actually working. Which there is no cure for it. However, um, the treatment does help to slow the progression, and that's why diagnosing is really important. And as she would have said before, because it's a progressive disease, the clinical features may not be there at the time when the client um, visits their doctor's office. Also, you have to take into consideration that the client may be in denial. The family member also may be in denial, so they may not be forthcoming. Um, so while carrying out that physical assessment, there may be some, some of those challenges might persist. Gotcha. And yes. my final question, risk factors. What are some of the risk factors that, because we've ruling out age, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a stereotype that only the 70, 80-year-old individuals are suffering from Alzheimer's. What are some of the risk factors then that persons of any age should be looking for? Quite frankly, age is a very, very important factor. It is a disease um, of the mind, of the elderly, but as time progresses and research continues, we realize that younger persons are suffering from Alzheimer's quite a bit as mm -hmm. well. Not as much as the older population, but yes, there are younger persons suffering. What puts you at risk for Alzheimer's? First of all, genetics. That's something that we can't do anything about. about. Yes. But um, there are ways of staving off uh, the progression of the disease, not so much the installation, but the progression of the disease. Um, it is said that uh, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, obesity, um, diabetes, these are factors as well that really, just like any other disease, they put you at very, very high risk, and it's the same for Alzheimer's. So it goes back to lifestyle. Lifestyle. <laughs> very interesting. Ladies, thank you very much for sitting with us. <clears throat> Excuse me. What we'd like to do is, because of the advocacy that you're doing, is to follow up with you and see how you've progressed. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Living with Alzheimer's or caring for someone with the diagnosis can be challenging. However, developing good coping skills will help you handle day-to-day -day difficulties, regain independence, remain engaged and active, and gain a sense of control over your life. For those of you who may be living with Alzheimer's, developing your own coping strategies doesn't have to be complicated. You can simplify the process by focusing on the following. Make a list of tasks that have become more challenging and develop coping strategies for these tasks. For example, if you are forgetting to take your medications but have no problem remembering to do the laundry, focus on creating medication reminder strategies. Don't be afraid to ask for help. If, for example, paying bills has become more difficult for you, you can ask someone to help you write out each check, yet remain in charge of signing each one. If you're a caregiver for an Alzheimer's patient or a family member living with the condition, here are a few strategies you can implement. Enhance communication with simple changes. It's especially important to choose your words carefully. Make sure to call your patient or loved one by name and give them a cue about your relationship. This will help orient them and get his or her attention. Plan activities that provide meaning. You can break activities into simple tasks that can be approached step by step. For example, if your patient or loved one enjoys gardening, you can break the activity into small steps. For more tips and health-related information, be sure to visit and like our Facebook page, 
facebook.com forward slash AUA Healthy Perspectives. Take care of yourselves. We thank you for spending some time with us and for allowing us to share healthy perspectives with you. Be well, Antigua and Barbuda, and may your perspective always be a healthy one.